Chef Justin Smiley was born in California. He was raised in New Jersey and has worked in some of New York City's top restaurants. When he was just 17 years old, he worked at the famed Bernard's Inn, getting his first taste of life in the kitchen, and he hasn't looked back. He has worked at Jean George's Mercer Kitchen, Danny Meyer's Gramercy Tavern, and Jonathan Waxman's legendary Barbudo. Last year, he opened his own restaurant, Upland, here in New York, where he pays tribute to his California roots with his seasonal rustic dishes. His first cookbook, Slow Fires, Mastering New Ways to Braise, Roast, and Grill, was just released, and we are thrilled to wes welcome Justin Smiley to The Dish. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, and what have we got on this table here? So we have a little slow roasted carrot with uh, some salsa verde. We have a apple crostata with a little fresh creme fraiche. Some quickly seared Brussels sprout petals with Calabrian chili. Some four peppercorn sh uh, roasted short ribs uh, with watermelon radish and some Meyer lemon. And some slow cooked polenta. That is what's so colorful. I was wondering what this vegetable or fruit was. Right? No, it's a vegetable, right? What is it? I've never heard of a watermelon radish before. Great Seasonal? pepper. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about the new cookbook, because I feel like we're in a time when everyone else is trying to do things fast, and you took the opposite approach and said, let's do it slow. I mean, my favorite thing about cooking is sharing time with family and friends, and, you know, the aim of the cookbook was really to get people to get back into the kitchen and kind of share these experiences with each other. That's kind of what got you started in your interest in cooking to begin with, right? Yes. The whole family experience. Family experience, like we always had great gardens in our backyard, and my great-grandmother fed me my first solid food, and kind of as that earliest food memory. I've been chasing it ever since I was a kid. Right. When you look at your resume, I mean, you've worked with some of the best. When you have that kind of experience, is there a moment when you think, now it's time for me to strike out on my own? I mean, yeah, I mean, you get to a point where you cook other people's food for so long and then you start to develop a palate and, you know, your own set of ideology and your own set of values. And, you know, I just wanted a place where I could kind of share like all my travels and where I've worked with people. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that you were for Jonathan Waxman at Barbudo. You two have a particularly tight relationship and, 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 in, and are similar in many ways. How would you describe that? I mean, he's really like my cooking father. I mean, I met Jonathan when I was 21 years old and at Washington Park, which was really a transformative experience because I kind of went from like the very fancy French restaurants and super fine dining haute cuisine, and Jonathan just had this kind of like natural ease. And, you know, I think what we both share is like a, a, a real appreciation for simple pleasures. Upland is now just over a year old. Yep. Has it been evolving? Have you watched it gradually change in terms of the menu? I mean, I think it always evolves because, you know, there's always a portion of your last thing or the last, you know, food that you've cooked and, you know, finding your identity in a new space and a new neighborhood in New York City because, mm -hmm. you know, every neighborhood's a new adventure in New what's, York. What's the most surprising thing you found about running your own restaurant? It just never stops. <laughs> <laughs> it just right, never I stops. Bet. <laughs> And what is, um, I, you know, so many young people now, I think, want your job, and they think of it as a very easy job. I'm sure you would have a different story. So what is your best piece of advice to someone who's coming up? You know, just follow your heart, follow your instincts, and, you know, pay attention to the things you do, because, you know, at a certain point, those are the things that you're going to teach and share with others. When... You were sharing with us. Actually, we were overhearing when you were in the green room earlier, you were telling some bad jokes. Love bad jokes. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> she was laughing on the set, so I want to hear one or two of those. So, what do you call a seagull that swims over the bay? A bagel. <laughs> I got this one, so I was quite proud of myself for that one. And the Adam joke. Tell that one for us too. So, why can you never trust an Adam? Because they make up everything. <laughs> well, I have a feeling that you probably bring a lot of that humor into the kitchen, which is probably you know, it, part it of your success. It breaks the ice. Yeah. As we hand you this dish and get your signature on it, we want to ask you if you could have this meal with any person, past or present, who would that person be? I think my great-grandmother. She initially started me off and got me really excited about simple food. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to share where I am now with her. Congratulations on Thank all you. your success. Chef Justin Smiley. And for more on the dish, please head to our website at cbsthismorning.com.